Assalamu alaikum fellow students. We will continue our presentation without a formal introduction in which we will discuss the relationship between biotechnology and agriculture. To start from the scratch, it is important to understand the general terms about the genetically modified organisms, though uh, we all are aware of this term previously uh, from, our, from the previous presentations and our lectures as well. But still, uh, the term said uh, it means that DNA has been altered using genetically uh, genetic engineering technique. Uh, to further understand uh, about the GMOs, we'll take a look at the following video. several years we've seen some strange genetically modified organisms pigs that glow in the dark chickens that grow without feathers and even goats that produce spider silk proteins but what really gets people riled up are genetically modified foods the prospect of eating somebody's science project turns the stomach of those who aspire to eat so-called whole or natural foods but what exactly does genetically modified mean anyways and how are those foods created? To answer these questions, we need to go back in time about 10,000 years. That's when people first started domesticating animals and cultivating plants for food. By picking organisms with desirable traits and mating them together over and over again, people were able to mold species to meet their dietary needs. The classic example is corn, which started out as a tropical grass called teos tinti, with small, nearly inedible kernels. Over thousands of years, ancient farmers in Mexico transformed the grass into the delicious, starchy treat we like to eat today. We now know those ancient farmers were manipulating the DNA of the Teosinti plant. As few as five changes to its genome, the long strands of DNA that encode for proteins, create the dramatic differences we see between Teosinti and corn. Scientists call this process artificial selection, and it's made all kinds of unappetizing plants edible, from wheat to rice to almonds and bananas. What's different about modern genetically modified foods is the speed and precision with which we can make changes. Now, instead of selectively breeding for traits, we can go directly to the DNA responsible, snip it out, and transplant it into newly developing plants and animals. If these snippets come from the same species, scientists call the new organism cisgenic, Cis means the same. But if the DNA comes from a completely different plant or animal, scientists call the new organism transgenic. Trans means to cross. Those fluorescent pigs, they glow green because they contain a gene from a luminescent jellyfish. And in the last 20 years, we've begun to see the food equivalent. Corn that makes bacterial toxins poisonous to pests, tomatoes that make the antifreeze proteins from fish, and even cows that produce human milk. So you may be wondering if this kind of overt manipulation is safe. Well, all of the GM foods currently on the market have been thoroughly tested, but the verdict's still out on some of the more exotic transgenic parents. Personally, I'm waiting for a tomato that I can cut in the dark. For Scientific American, Right, so uh, this video talks about the term transgenic as well as cisgenic. Where cis and trans means uh, a natural gene or a foreign gene, which has been inserted either from a strain or a different species. Basically, cisgenesis or transgenesis don't need genetic modification. Okay. Donor genetic modification hoti hai, lekin cis genesis mein hota hai ki a recipient plant uh, is first uh, with a sensory compatible plant. There is transgenesis, there is transgenesis a genetic modification with uh, one or more genes from any non plant organism or from a donor plant that is sensory incompatible plant. If we take an example, we can see that a carrot is very thin, but the color is orange. And if we take a carrot, it will be very thin. And if we take a carrot, it will be very thin. 
जो दूसरी कह रहे थे वो थोड़ी स्ट्रिक है तो अगर हम दोनों को मतलब दोनों की जीन जो है वो मतलब एक एक और हम एक स्पीशी चाहिए तो उसी स्पीशी का एक और ऑफिसेंट कह रहे क्या तो अगर हमें वो चाहिए तो हम जब जीन चेंज करेंगे या डीएनए चेंज करके जब कोई जीन एक्सप्रेस करेंगे तो जो एक ऑफिसेंट होगा जो एक न्यू कैरेज जो आएगी तो वो स्टिक भी होगी और उसका कलर भी ऑरेंज होगा तो उसमें दोनों जीन आ जाएंगे जब हम दोनों को क्रॉस कर जाएंगे तो ये एक एग्जाम्पल अच्छी हो सकती है एंड ट्रांस वेल ट्रांसजेनिक ऑर्गेनिज्म आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड जेनेटिकली इंजीनियर ऑर्गेनिज्म और जो जो प्लांट्स जो होते हैं जब वो हम इजीली जेनेटिकली मैनिपुलेट कर सकते हैं टिश्यू कल्चर को क्योंकि टिश्यू कल्चर में ये होता है कि एक प्लांट जो है वो एक सिंगल सेल से इजीली ग्रो हम कर सकते हैं और मैनिपुलेशन अच्छी खास हो सकती है लेकिन बस प्रॉब्लम ये होती है कि उसमें कोई वेरिएशन नहीं आएगी क्योंकि वो सारे जेनेटिकली आइडेंटिकल होते हैं चलो राखी बेटा एक दफा दोबारा बता दो मैंने बताया था मैं दोबारा एक्सप्लेन कर दूं थोड़ा सा जोर से बोलना देखो पर्टिकुलरली मैं अगर इस वीडियो की बात करूं तो दिस वीडियो टॉक्ट अबाउट इट हम ट्रांसजेनिक एज वेल एज सिर्फ जेनिक वेयर सिर्फ एंड ट्रांस मींस अ नेचुरल जीन और अ फॉरेन जीन व्हिच हैज बीन इंसर्टेड इदर फ्रॉम द सेम और अ डिफरेंट स्पीशीज Plants 
And this is actually uh, the technique and example of hybridization. Like he took purple flower and the white flower, both the same species, B, and then of course uh, there also comes the factor of the dominant and recessive. And so all of the flowers were of purple flower, but they also had the white, white chain, white allele in them. Um, another thing that I would like to add is that um, we um, we also are familiar now with the term transgenic and its definition. So it is important that we now look at how transgenic plants are actually made. That is how the transfer of the desired trait or gene takes place. We have already studied some of these methods for the transgenic organisms like recombinant DNA technology in bacteria and also the polymerase chain reaction of PCR, which copies of, in which millions of copies of desired DNA were made. Um, I will present another video now that actually talks about an overview of the transgenic plants. I hope that the voice will be clear. of gene transfer, firstly by the use of bacterium, or the second method third was the gene gun method. Uh, in addition to these two, uh, two methods, uh, a core method which we might expect to mention is that is through the protoplasm. We will briefly methods to briefly uh, So the first method that is through the bacterium. It's not simply we bacterium, which is similar to the recombinant DNA technology that we studied previously. This can be a bacteria, which is called acrobacterium tumefaciens. This can be the first stage we have to remove the plasma. This is called the Thai plasma. After the removal of this Thai plasma, with the help of restriction enzyme, we will remove the tDNA. Remove it. And with the same uh, restriction enzyme, the foreign gene here for our gene of interest, us, uh, us extract karenge, remove karenge, or us ko hum place karenge, insert karenge into the Thai plasmid, uh, where the DNA was removed. Now this is the recombinant Thai plasmid, or this uh, recombinant Thai plasmid ko next stage mein hum baapis place karenge into the bacterium. This bacterium ki uh, uh specialty is specifically wo plant cells ko infect karta hai. So when we remove the third gene of interest, we insert the third gene of interest. So when we remove the plant cells, the foreign gene or the gene of interest will transfer the chromosomes in the chromosomes. This way, the adult plant at the end will contain the same gene of interest, which we wanted to use. So this was the first method. Second, 
method is the gene gun method. Gene gun method के अंदर simply हम DNA coated gold particles को या फिर simply हम कह सकते हैं कि DNA coated metal particles होते हैं, उसको हम bombard करवाते हैं over the target transcells. In this section, we can see that here is the gene gun barrier. This is the plastic disc, which we have coated with the gold particles or metal particles. And then we have a screen over here. And then there is a presence of helium gas. This helium gas basically acts as a propellant. Or in other words, it helps to build up pressure. And when this pressure builds up, this DNA coated particles are coated. They are bombarded over the target plant cells. Another method, which we technically mention is that is through the protoplast. What is before starting? We have to understand what is a protoplast actually. A protoplast is that plant cell which we have removed the cell wall. Now, what is in the procedure? We have to remove the protoplast. We have to keep it in a tissue culture medium, and we pass in high electric pulse through it. उस इलेक्ट्रिक पल्स को पास करने की वजह से जो प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन होती है, डेट बिकम्स पोरस और उसके पोरस होने की वजह से जो डीएनए होता है वो एंटर कर जाता है इनटू दी सेल। नाउ दिस थ्री मेथड्स मतलब हमारे में ये सवाल आ सकता है कि व्हाई और दिस थ्री स्पेसिफिक मेथड्स वो डिफरेंट मेथड्स यूज्ड फॉर द कि फॉर इंस्टेंस हम अगर कॉर्न और वीट प्लांट पीसेस की एग्जांपल देते हैं तो दे हैव अ वेरी मच इंटैक्ट सेल वॉल और उस इंटैक्ट सेल वॉल होने की वजह से वी कैन नॉट कैरी आउट द मेथड ऑफ प्रोटोप्लास्ट टू इट तो इसलिए हम उनके अंदर जीन गन मेथड को यूटिलाइज करते हैं फॉर द ट्रांसफर ऑफ जीन इन दी कॉर्न एंड वीट प्लांट्स वी हैव दोज ऑर्गेनिज्म अगर हमें इंसेक्टिसाइड में हर्बिसाइड रेजिस्टेंट प्लांट्स फॉर्मेट करने होते हैं तो उसके लिए भी यूज़ दी स्ट्रेस मेथड दैट इस चूती बैक्टीरियम जीन गन मेथड जो होता है इट इस इट इस कंसीडर्ड मच मोर फीसिबल बिकॉज़ इट्स नॉट ओनली क्या कह सकते हैं इट्स नॉट ओनली स्पेसिफिक टुवर्ड्स दी � Another example, if we look at the protoplast example, we have the tobacco or the glowing tobacco plant. This experiment was conducted in 1986, where they inserted a gene forming enzyme, the firefly enzyme, Lucy Face. And this tobacco plant, it glowed when it was filled with the structure of Lucy Face. So this is actually the explanation. We can actually have a look at the video again. Hopefully, it will be much more clear. I hope that this time the video is clearer. Okay. Let's try again. The process of genetic modification of plants usually uses the bacterium, agrobacterium, tumor fascians, which is characterized by the presence of the entire plasmid, an excellent vector. This plasmid contains a gene responsible for the development of tumor like swellings on plant roots. In laboratory conditions, it is possible to replace this gene with another gene of desired properties. In the first stage of genetic modification, gum plant leaves are cut into tiny pieces and exposed to plant hormones. The bacterium, agrobacterium tumor fascians, is then added. At this stage, the desired gene is transferred from the plasmid into the plant cell genome. Then in the presence of the plant hormones, single plant cells transformed by the plasmid develop into entire plants which possess the desired traits. Another technique of plant genome modification uses a so-called gene gun. In this technique, DNA is literally shot into plant cells. Both macroscopic particles and gold are coated with purified plasmid that contain gene that coated the desired traits. These particles are transferred onto a plastic membrane which is placed under the gene gun. Then helium is discharged under great pressure, forcing the gold particles coated with plasmids into the plant cells.
So I have to ask two questions from you all. The first one is that uh, do you guys support GMO? And uh, the second one is that should we continue to use genetically modified organisms in food production or not? Can you tell me answers in the chat box? Wow, kya questions which are very covered. Who's going to answer the questions? Right. Hmm, uh, the first question is that do you guys support GMOs, genetically modified organisms or not? And the second one is that should we continue to use genetically modified organisms in food production or not? Also tell me the reason. देखो हमारे सपोर्ट में सपोर्ट करने से ये होगा कि अगर हम जो फार्मर्स ग्रो कर रहे हैं जीएम तो वो किस तरह मतलब ग्रो कर रहे हैं वो कितने पेस्टिसाइड यूज कर रहे हैं कितने केमिकल्स यूज कर रहे हैं तो वो जो प्लांट्स होते हैं वो हम भी तो कंज्यूम करते हैं हम ही बाय करते हैं अगर तो वो हम ही कंज्यूम करते हैं तो कुछ तो ऐसा प्रॉब्लम होगी कि भाई जो पर्टिकुलर प्लांट है ये Good, very good. Or good? Yes. Um, all right. As we move forward our presentation, um, it is important to understand that why and how the genetically modified plants are beneficial to us as humans. Um, for example, one of the biggest examples I can give, and also the first video also gives, is corn. Corn is actually, um, basically it was just a, an edible type of plant, but now it's actually a more, uh, I think it's actually, we have different versions of the bio, bio uh, the biotechnology and different versions of the genetically modified now. For example, one of the most common examples that I'm actually going to present to you right now is this BT corn right here. BT actually stands for Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria. It is a bacteria that actually produces toxins to some insects. And these toxins are actually introduced in these corn. So basically any insect, and it actually acts as insecticides. Any insects, any pests that are around this corn field, they actually don't um, survive too. But these um, toxins that are produced by this bacteria are actually are uh, not harmful to us as human beings, which is a wonderful thing because then we would not survive. But also another thing um, that the examples also contain, and these are also in the books uh, of our uh, Punjab board and single, and that is the examples of soybean, cotton, alfalfa, and rice. And also some plants are modified to produce human hormones, antibodies, and clotting factors. Now, LIBO will give us a small overview of a few um, genet genetically modified plants that actually and the traits that were introduced in them. I will be discussing the aims of genetic engineering as we all know that the world population is increasing day by day. The food requirement is also increasing. 
for this purpose scientists have to work for increasing the crop yield they have to decrease the factors that negatively affect the crop yield and they introduce some agricultural traits in um, in the crops that are a source of food agricultural traits that are introduced in the crops are herbicide resistance salt drought and cold tolerance modified wood pulp in crops such as rice sugar beet canola sugarcane and trees this have uh, these uh, agricultural traits have an impact on the uh, food quality that are oil and amino acid content in corn and soybean proteins in cereal and potato the reason for genetically engineering the food crops is to reduce the need of chemical pesticides as the example discussed by rafia a gene from bacteria named the uh, bacillus thuringiensis is inserted in maize crops this uh, gene in this encodes a gene for a protein that immunizes the crop from pests this decreases the need of chemical pesticides in uh, in the crop also we use it for uh, the betterment of uh, size and quality of the crop genetic engineering also decreases the risk of fungal diseases protection from extreme weather condition or simply to obtain food with higher nutritional values once we obtain the food or uh, the food crop we can also uh, obtain the clones from it as discussed by sokana she told us that we can also be doing the tissue culture for producing the similar uh, offspring crop okay now i'd like to actually use these images to explain a little bit more about these genetically modified plants first examples that we have are corn and soybean have already explained about the corn that is the bt corn that captures the bacillus thuringiensis genetically modified corn and it is actually modified to uh, also use as food and also any uh, also access an insecticide to some insects one of the examples of these insects is the bell worm which is toxic uh, which can um, die if it eats this type of corn um moving forward with the soybean right here soybeans are actually genetically modified all around the world and it is actually uh, modified to produce more oil content as mentioned by liva it is also you know the products that we use like soy sauce and also some other soy products they are also being used to create uh, from this soybean and also more yield is produced via the genetically modified soybean um another example that i would like to give is the wheat example the genetically, uh, genetically modified wheat is grown all over the world and also in pakistan um in the 2007 uh, study uh, there was a report created and in that report um cereals in, including maize which is also known as corn wheat canola and um one more um plant i guess uh, it was the soybean yes these four plants were actually genetically modified and they had a whole um um report that was produced from them however i'm sure that uh recently in the recent uh, years more production of the genetically modified crops in pakistan are there uh, wheat is actually very common example and it is used to create first of all more yield of the crop as we know that wheat is used in multiple uses and like bread and other like jajal um, i would say other examples for example uh, we have cakes we have other baked goods we also have a few other like we know that this pod in which the wheat is there is also used in a lot of things when it comes to potatoes i'm not sure if you guys know about the different types of potatoes but if you actually go on google and you search it up there are actually almost i would say 20 plus types of potatoes out there which i'll obviously show that potatoes are actually immensely genetically modified 
this right here potato that you can see is actually the yellow potato. Um, different types of potatoes are used for different types of uses. For example, there is actually a salad potato that is specifically used for salads. There is another one that you can use in curries. There is also another one that you can actually specifically use just to create french fries. So there are different types of potatoes. This one here, yellow potato, is actually known to be very delicious and especially when baked. This one here is the one that we see a lot in our homes. Um, this is a normal type of potato, I'm guessing the golden potato. This one right here is the Laura potato, it's actually red in color. And it has again a different type of use in our daily cooking. Um, this here is the golden rice. I'm not sure if, if this is actually a very known thing because golden rice is actually a very controversial topic and it was just recently in 2018 when Canada and USA approved of these rices to be actually used and cultivated. But still lately, this rice is not planted anywhere as of yet. Um, golden rice was originally created in the year 1999, and it was created to actually combat the vitamin A deficiency. It contains a vitamin called beta carotene, which is actually synthesized into vitamin A by our bodies. This vitamin, beta carotene, is not present in the normal white rice that we eat. So this was actually, golden rice was created. Again, there are a lot of controversies, controversies around it. Um, farmers are not ready to grow this rice, but and it's still not planted anywhere. So US and Canada actually approved of it in 2018. Um, you may also know of other rice um, types that are actually genetically modified. For example, there's actually Chinese black rice, which is black in color. There's also a green rice, which is also genetically modified. Um, there's also a whole wholesome rice, which is almost like cream in color. These all types of rice have different vitamins and different nutrients in them, and they're all genetically modified. This here is the sugar beet. This is, uh, I don't even know what sugar beet was until I was doing the research. But sugar beet is was actually created, um, I guess, it is a type of beet, you can say. And after sugar cane, it is the second most common uh, plant that we use for sugar production. This size here, right here, is actually not the size of the normal sugar beet that you see. But because this is genetically modified, the sizes are increased to create more sugar production. And as the world is, you know, constantly uh, going towards development and we are clearing out forests to create more crops, more uh, land and more resources are needed to create more efficient type of crops that can actually fulfill a lot of needs at once. Okay. This year, the canola, I'm sure you guys have heard of the canola oil. Okay. But basically, canola oil is um, used in a lot of our cooking and also for other uses. And canola is also um, a plant. Um, so it's like a flower. And this is actually used to create more oil. And also, one more thing that I'd like to add is that canola oil, actually, this has more omega-3 fats in it now, as it is genetically modified. This here is the sugar cane. Again, the world's most leading plant that actually produces the most sugar. Um, these are like the different types of sh uh, sugar cane, the genetically modified sugar cane um, that we actually have. Um, again, the more amount of sucrose that these um, plants may have, these crops may have, the more amount of sugar will be produced. Um, the first experiment for the genetically modified sugar cane was actually done in South Africa. And there it was actually grown, and it is still grown there and also in other more countries. Um, as I have talked about the modified wood pulp, we know that wood pulp is used for making paper, most of all. Um, trees and eventually like huge forests are grown with genetically modified trees that can provide us not only with wood pulp but also there are also some genetically modified trees that are grown especially to like balance out the CO2 amount in the air we know that you know greenhouse effect is going on the carbon dioxide and other harmful gases are growing yes so, like, there, there are yes Miss Amari Botany Glasser or Miss Bulari and Sapko. Yes, 
ये बच्चों जाओ जाओ मैंने नीचे मैसेज में लिख दिया था एक्चुअली सुटैनो का आवाज नहीं जा रही थी हमारी ठीक है थैंक यू सो वेरी मच तीनों जो आप लोगों ने वो प्रेजेंट किए है ना मेथड वो बहुत अच्छे प्रेजेंट किए हैं ठीक है स्टूडेंट्स इतना अच्छा नहीं समझा पाते लेकिन आपने बहुत अच्छा प्रेजेंट किया है ठीक है तीनों मैट्रिक्स को सो थैंक्स अ लॉट मुझे तो बहुत अच्छा क्लियर हो गया है आई गेस कुछ स्टूडेंट्स को जिन्हें आवाज नहीं जा रही थी प्रॉपरली वो वीडियो देखेंगे तो उन्हें क्लियर हो जाएगा ठीक है थैंक यू सो वेरी मच बहुत अच्छी प्रेजेंटेशन थी वेरी गुड और प्रेजेंटेशन देख के लग रहा है कि कितनी मेहनत की पिक्चर्स अलग हैं प्रेजेंटेशन अलग है वीडियोस अलग हैं वेरी गुड ओके भागो स्टूडेंट्स थैंक यू राफिया सुकैना लाइबा एंड सैदा सारा आई लव यू